We are here today to speak with you about TensorFlow's high-level APIs. So one area I'm particularly passionate about is making machine learning as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. And uh, the TensorFlow team has been investing very heavily in the same thing. So we've spent a lot of energy uh, making TensorFlow easier to use. So there's uh, three things that are concrete that I'd like to uh, walk you through. And the very first is um, even if you're brand new to TensorFlow, you're brand new to machine learning, even if you're new to Python, uh, one area that seems silly but is non-trivial for a lot of people is actually just installing TensorFlow in different dependencies. And I know for Python developers, it's just pip install TensorFlow, but that can be hard for people that are brand new. So I'm going to show you something called Colab. And I'll walk you through Colab. It's basically a Jupyter Notebook server running in the cloud. It's free of charge. It has TensorFlow pre-installed, comes with a free GPU. It's awesome. I'll walk you through how to use that, how to get started with TensorFlow. The next thing, um, TensorFlow has many different APIs. But my personal favorite and what I'd strongly, strongly recommend to you is something called Keras. And Keras, uh, the Keras API is completely implemented inside of TensorFlow. Uh, it's great. I can't tell you uh, how much fun I've had uh, using it. So I'll walk you through writing Hello World in Keras. The same API is also useful for TensorFlow.js. And then I'm going to point you to some educational resources uh, to learn more. Uh, so briefly, this is what I would do if you want to try uh, TensorFlow and Keras and TF data and uh, eager execution in the fastest possible way. And I should tell you uh, off the bat, so all these APIs, they're fully implemented, and they're working well. We are just now uh, starting to write all the samples and docs around them. So I have a feeling the samples I was able to cook up for this talk, are, they're quite rough. Um, but uh, stay tuned and check back in the next few months as we flesh this out. But let me just show you uh, how to dive right in. So if you go to this website, it will bring you to this GitHub site. And if you scroll down to the README, you'll see a sequence of a few notebooks. And I just want to show you how easy it is to get started. If you just click on one, what happens is they open up immediately in Colab. And so now you have a Jupyter notebook. It's running entirely in the cloud. You can hit Connect to connect to a kernel. And now I can start running these cells. And I'll walk you through this in more detail in a few minutes. But if you go through the first notebook, this is going to show you how to write your first neural network using Keras. Um, there's a little bit of pre-processing code, but the notebook is very short. The next notebook will show you how to do the same thing using uh, Keras in combination with TF data and eager execution. And then we go into a little bit more depth. So it's literally that easy to get started. So there's broadly five steps um, to write Hello World in TensorFlow using Keras. The good news is steps three, four, and five are literally one line of code. And you can see that on the second line, we're importing MNIST. And this is easy because the data set is already, we have a loader for it that's baked into uh, TensorFlow. Uh, here's the format of the data set. So as imported, it's divided already for us into train and test. Train is about 60,000, test is 10,000. The top right, I have a diagram of the format of the images. If you look at the notebooks on that workshop directory, the best thing you can do when you import a data set is to spend a lot of time asking really basic questions. So literally, when you import the data, print it out. And there's a couple points that I want to make. One, this is the complete code to define the network. So it's code concise. Two, broadly, the more layers you add to your network and the more neurons or units per layer the more capacity your network has, meaning the more types of patterns it can recognize. The problem is, the more things your network can recognize, the more likely it is to memorize the training data. Here's the cool part. Building your model is where there are many, many machine learning concepts that you have to spend a lot of time learning. The next three steps, they're literally concepts that are basically involved with running an experiment. Here's the only parameter. So here's how you train the model. So it's one line. Fit is synonymous with train. And we're training it using the training images and the training labels. Training a network is a little bit like tuning a guitar. So think if you have a guitar, and you want to, it starts untuned. And you want to tune the strings to hit a particular note. So you start tuning it. And like every time you twist the wheel on the guitar, you can think of that as an epoch. After that, you can evaluate it. And evaluate just means, given some new data, uh, classify it with my network, and take a look at the accuracy and other metrics. That's also just one line of code. Thank you very much, everyone. I uh, really appreciate your time and hope this stuff is useful to you.